God. It is in the word of God. Every house is built by some man. Every life is built by some man. Marriage is built by God. And of course, it is fast to overcome the world. Quit complaining to people. Begin to say what you want to say. And stop saying what you are saying. Happy home is purchasable if only and only you can pay the price. Have you ever heard of the term covenant before? Covenant is um, simply an agreement between two parties or two or more parties. But I want to talk about covenant between man and God. This simply means an agreement between God and his people. Whether when God makes promises and expects certain behavior from his own people. God will not work closely with any man who is not in covenant with him. And the question is, how does this relate to marriage? Marriage is a covenant. But you know, people think marriage is just between you know, a man and a woman. No, you get it all wrong. In marriage, God expects to be there. The covenant is not just between you and your spouse. God is supposed to be involved. Why should God be involved? So that it can work. God is like a farmer. He will not take anything if his interest is not protected. And that's why you must take covenant very seriously. The Bible speaks in the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And verse 6 says, and the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Do you want God to sit on your case? Of course, you will always judge you know, in your own interest. Then you must enter into covenant with him. Let me take you back to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm sure it was read on your wedding day. That is if you're married. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For in the four, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not an it. The Bible says, for if they fall. Now, most people think one of them, if one of them falls. Now, the Bible says, if they fall. That is to say, the two of them are bound to fall. He says, the one will lift up his fellow. Who is the one? You need to ask yourself. If two people are on the ground, and the Bible says, the one will lift up his fellow. There must be a third person in that relationship. The Bible says in verse 11, again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall stand, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. There is a third person in that relationship. If they fall, the one will lift the other. They're talking about they, that they is the two people, the husband and the wife. Of course, God sees them as one. There's a third person that would lift them up. The question is, what if God is not in that relationship? When the two of them fall, the fall will be so mighty. Now, I'm sure this is getting very interesting. You probably thought this was just talking about you and your wife. If you've read the scripture well enough, I want you to go into that place again and read it. We'll be right back as we continue with this analogy.
come back. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Now, the person giving you the labor is God. Labor simply means work, I mean the assignment. And God really needs to be there. You need God like yesterday in your relationship and marriage. You need him so, so, so very much. The Bible says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. As we read in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12. A threefold cord. They have been talking about two, two, two. All of a sudden, three appeared because there must be a third person in your home. Now, I don't mean, you know, when you open your eyes and you see one very big, mighty God with very big hands. Yes, it's there. But he's present in your home in form of the word. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The third person in your home must be the word of God. For if two of you fall, the word of God will lift you up. Now God is not saying you will not fall. First John chapter 5 and verse 4 says, Whatever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now you don't talk about overcoming if there's no battle. Yeah. You have to fight the good fight of faith. Even in your marriage, it's a daily fight. We'll never stop fighting until we're called home. Now, you have to be prepared. But we're not left amless. We have the word of God to fight every battle of life. The word of God is what boosts, boosts your faith. And Bible says your faith is the victory that overcometh. You need the third man. You need Jesus in your marriage. You need the word of God. I don't know what they have told you in the past. I don't know what, what they've recommended. But what I'm recommending today is the word of God. You need to enter into covenant with God. If God has never been in your marriage, if God has never been in your life, this is a time to do it. And of course, when we come back, I'll be doing that with you. Welcome back. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for the labor. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You need to enter covenant with God. You need to consciously get to God and say, God, I can't do this on my own. My wisdom has filled me. My intelligence has failed me. All the good and wonderful advice they've given to me, they've also failed. I need you in my life. I need you in my home. I need you in my relationship. I don't like what is happening. You've got to be humble and go into covenant with God. How do you do this? Accept the Lord Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. You don't need to argue about that. It's, it's, you've suffered so much. Arguing is the height of foolishness and stupidity. You have, you're already down and so you don't need to be ashamed of anything. You want to come up because when your story changes, even those that are mocking you today will change their opinion about you. You need to enter into covenant with the Lord Jesus. You need to give your heart totally to Him. When you've done that, you need to invite Him into your marriage. Now, I won't fail to say this. 
so many people are living adulterers that you have one, two, three kids without the consent of God does not mean you are married. It doesn't matter how long you have been in the wrong. It will never turn to be right. And God is not a democratic God. It doesn't matter how many people agree with you in whatever you are doing. If it is not proper, it is not proper. Orange is orange, red is red, pink is pink. They might be in the same red family, but they are really different. If you know you were not really married, if you know you never invited God into your home, maybe that's how, why you're having some problems. You need to meet a man of God. You need to meet somebody you believe so much in. And of course, somebody that has the spirit of the living God. Tell them to bless that marriage. Tell them to invite God on your behalf into your home. And that will be a new start. You need to study the word of God. You need to fellowship with the brethren. You need to please God. You need to begin to obey the scriptures. You need to work in the will of God. You need to walk the word of God so that the word of God can work for you. I just want you to bow your head in a moment and you repeat this after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that you died for me. On the third day, you rose from the dead. I'm a sinner, but today I receive you into my life. Come and be my Lord. Come and be my Savior. I will never go back to the world again. I renounce Satan. I renounce sin. Help me today. Give me your grace to live as a believer. I am born again today. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this one, so God, under the sound of my voice. I thank you because I, I know there is rejoicing in heaven over this ones. I pray, oh God, that that which you have done today in their lives will be forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. Now you can begin a new start in your home. A happy home is purchasable. If only, and only, you can pay the price. A happy home is purchasable. If only you can pay the price. This home is a place to be. A happy home is purchasable. If only you can pay the price. This home is the place to be. Happy home.